Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Elementary Education Content Knowledge Exam. And this is the test code here, 5018. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this exam. Um, obviously, uh, when you're teaching, and uh, depending on what state you're in, uh, as far as the Praxis is concerned, uh, several states use this, but there's other states that have their own uh, certification exams like California, uh, or Texas, but the Praxis is uh, probably one of the most uh, popular uh, tests or it's the most widely used um, certification program out there. So uh, you obviously got to be knowing, you know, what specific certification that you need to take. And there's other elementary education uh, certifications, but here we're going to be talking about the 5018 uh, elementary education content knowledge exam and specifically we're going to be talking about the math that you are likely going to be encountering on this exam and we got a practice problem here that we're going to look at in a second and you should be able to handle uh, this problem pretty easily if you're fully prepared for this particular exam but we'll get to that in a second um, but first, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed many online math courses to actually include a Praxis Elementary Education Content Knowledge Exam uh, 5018 Math Test Prep course. I'm going to leave a uh, link to that course in a description in the description of this video. But all my courses, the way I build them is I go ahead, I do research what's on, you know, what kind of math is on this test. And I try to come up with a custom curriculum that will kind of, you know, fit, you know, um, that test objectives, you know, as nicely as possible. Um, again, I don't want to be over teaching, you know, you more advanced stuff that you're not going to need on this, or I don't want to under teach as well. So it's a kind of a balancing act. But if I had to describe the math that's on this particular exam, I would characterize it as kind of like high school level math, you know, um, algebra and geometry uh, with some other uh, type uh, topics in there as well. But that's kind of a, I think, a pretty decent description. You know, a lot of uh, basic level, uh, high school level algebra and geometry, but nothing, you know, you shouldn't be encountering any calculus problems or uh, super advanced trigonometry problems, etc. on this particular exam. So, if math is not your thing, you could still do very well on the, on this exam. But <clears throat> um, one of the things is that if you haven't taken a look at uh, what's going to be on this exam in terms of the math portion of it, this elementary education sometimes can, um, I think, be deceiving for, for some of your candidates out there. You could be like, oh, yeah, it's elementary education math, so I just need to know decimals and fractions and place values. And you need to know that stuff as well. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. you got to know that basic stuff as well. And that basic stuff can be, you know, you're going to have to study that. Uh, and that's, of course, included in my uh, uh, course as well. I go over some of those foundational things like place value. But you're also not going to you know, escape high school level algebra. So you're like, ah, well, I'm only going to be teaching elementary education. Well, for this particular exam and most other uh, elementary certification exams, you're again going to have to know some uh, high school level math. So let's go ahead and get to this problem here. Okay, so I have uh, obviously I got some sort of um, algebraic expression. What I'd like you to do is to uh, simplify this. I want you to to write this in its simplest form. Now, the way I like to do these little problems is give you an opportunity uh, to pause the video and do this problem on your on your own. Um, but I am going to give you a hint here in a second. So if you don't want to hear the hint and you can do it on your own, definitely pause the video and, and uh, uh, go for it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint now that, of course, I'm going to solve the problem. All right, so we obviously got some sort of fraction situation going on and we have these expressions, but this problem is going to require basically uh, two things. One, your knowledge of factoring, okay? So you have to be able to factor uh, in algebra and in mathematics in general, okay? So what is factoring? Well, factoring in its most basic sense, let's say I had 20 over... 50, right? And most of you out there know, oh, I can simplify that 
as uh, two fifths, and you would be correct. But the concept of factoring is saying, uh, all right, what are the factors of 20? So, for example, uh, 2 times 10, I could write 20 as 2 times 10. Now, I could continue to factor beyond there, but I don't want to make this video too long, but these are factors of 20 because 2 and 10, um, when you multiply them together, you get back to 20. So we would call these factors and the process from going from here to here is called factoring, right? And that's a whole huge little, you know, skill set in and of itself. But let's talk about 50. We could write 50 as 5 times 10. Now, here we have common factors in the numerator and denominator. So what we can do is cross-cancel like factors, and are le we're left with two-fifths. So when you're simplifying or reducing fractions, that's really what you're doing. You're, you, you're doing it without even maybe thinking about it. You're factoring and you're cross-canceling like factors. But in algebra, you've got to be very, very specific about doing that. Okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing that you need to be aware of is that we have a fraction and we're dividing by something else here okay now anytime you see a number uh, and you want to look at it as a fraction let's say like seven you can always uh, think of any number or value or expression as a fraction as uh, when you put it over one so you're like oh seven seven's not a fraction well everything's a fraction when you put it over one because seven then would be the numerator and one would be the denominator so and when you're looking at this, we're we have one fraction and we're dividing it by something else. Well, it's also a fraction. We'll just put it over one. Okay, so you need to know how to deal with fractions. Okay, so dividing fractions is what? Well, how do you divide fractions? If I have two thirds divided by two fifths, the way I divide fractions is I need to flip this uh, fraction to the right of the division operator. So that's going to be two thirds. I'm going to find the reciprocal or flip it upside down. That would be five halves. And now when you do that, you turn this into a multiplication problem. Okay, so division of fractions, you find the reciprocal of that fraction to the right of the division operator. And now you turn it into a multiplication problem. And then how do you multiply fractions? Well, you just multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So again, you know, basic level stuff that hopefully you know, you're familiar with. Now, at this point, if you're, and I'm kind of giving you um, hints here, if you're kind of overwhelmed, you're like, oh boy, this is, you know, not good for me right now, don't panic, you know, just, uh, um, you know, use this video as feedback, but you don't want to go into this exam unprepared. You know, uh, do what you have to do to, you know, um, you know, study and learn this stuff. Just by virtue of you watching this video, you're obviously taking this serious, you have the goal to become an elementary teacher, you can do this, right? But let's get to this problem. Even if you um, are lost, just follow my steps, and I think you'll be, uh, you'll definitely gain something from it. All right, so first things first. First, I want to factor um, all these expressions. So here, I can factor this, x squared minus 9. In algebra, there's something called the difference of two squares. I can factor this as x plus 3, times x minus 3, okay, over x plus 3, okay, and that's going to be divided by x minus 3 over 1. Now, how I went from here to here, that's a whole section on uh, factoring in algebra, okay, one is a very important factoring technique, but it's something you're going to have to be familiar with, because uh, if you don't know how to factor in algebra, Okay, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to do many other problems. You have to learn how to factor. And it's just one of those things that students are like, ugh, factoring, I hate factoring. But you got to be good at it, okay? Anyway, so that's a whole other separate video on why this is this. But it's just basically a simple rule called the difference of two squares. Matter of fact, let me just write it real quick. It's a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b equals a or times a minus b so that may bring back some memories okay so here's my situation now so you want to fully factor everything and what would i want to fully factor well i can take advantage of uh, seeing fractions when i can i can see all the factors going on because i'm looking for like factors i'm like oh look this and this are like factors so i can cross cancel them 
and those guys go away. So now I can uh, reduce my problem down to x minus 3 over 1, okay? There's a 1 down here, all right? So let's go and write that, actually, x minus 3. It's not just x minus 3 by itself, um, although we can write it that way. We still, because we're looking at this as fractions, so we'll put it over 1. We'll put parentheses around, around it there. And we're going to divide that by x minus 3 over 1. Now let's just think about what this is saying. I'm taking x minus 3 and I'm dividing it by x minus 3. If I take anything and I divide it by itself, the answer is what? Uh, you take triangle divided by triangle, the <laughs> answer is 1. Anything, infinity divided by infinity. Well, this is a little bit different because... I haven't get into more advanced math, but you get my point, right? Anything divided by itself is going to be 1, okay? So x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. Let's just go ahead and just follow the rules of fractions. Okay, this be x minus 3 over 1 times, now I'm going to flip this guy upside down, right? 1 over x minus 3. Now, uh, this is a multiplication problem, so I'm going to divide or multiply the respective numerators. So x minus 3 times 1 is x minus 3. 1 times x minus 3 is x minus 3. x minus 3 over x minus 3 as a fraction is 1. Okay, so all of this right here was simply just a 1 uh, incognito. But um, yeah, this is the type of little uh, problems that you can encounter for sure, you know, on this exam. Okay, again, you're going to be doing much more than just basic level, you know, fractions and, you know, place value. And it's not to minimize that stuff. You're going to be teaching uh, all of that. And that's critical, too, because, uh, you know, even like division, how you do division, let's say 50 um, or let's say um, 782 divided by uh, 53, the steps here, just think about the conceptual steps. Now, I don't want to get into how you're being taught or what state whether you're using common core approaches or tr more traditional approach to division, et cetera. But I'm just, just saying how you teach a student to do this is a fairly involved process. It's actually called the division algorithm. And you got to go through a, a whole algorithm, like a, you know, an algorithm is like a computer program where you got to go through procedures, steps, et cetera, to, um, you know, calculate the answer here. You know, obviously you're not using a calculator. But this division algorithm is used um, way later down the line in more advanced algebra when you're doing division of polynomials and other things like that. And you're using these same steps that you're taught at the elementary level. So what you're teaching has a legacy, okay, that will follow your students, you know, in terms of their math comprehension later down the line, okay? And, it's, and that's why, you know, it's important, and I think... Uh, uh, the people who uh, lay out the certification objectives for these ex these exams are smart to have elementary education teachers, um, you know, have to show a uh, comprehension of at least, you know, uh, high school level algebra and geometry because that's what you're really getting your students prepared for. It's really a continuum of education. You know, you're passing that student on to the middle school teachers, which are going to build upon what you taught them the high school teachers, et cetera. So it's a continuum of education, but these skills and concepts really do apply. So things like this show up again um, in, uh, you know, advanced algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my Praxis test prep course for this uh, particular exam. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for several years, probably like 12 years at the time of this uh, video. I already have hundreds of videos that can help you prepare for this particular exam, but I'm posting stuff all the time. So hopefully consider subscribing. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, what's your situation? Are you coming from high school to college to teaching or are you maybe coming from another career uh, teaching or another uh, grade level? Um, you know, so I always find it interesting to hear people's story, how they become teacher, why become teachers, or why they become teachers. Um, there's, you know, everyone might have these stereotypes of, oh, people, you know, all teachers think the same, or all teachers are motivated by the same thing, or all teachers have the same background. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Okay, there's a lot of 
wide ranging experiences um, that make up, uh, you know, all the teachers in a particular school. So I always find it uh, interesting on uh, just to hear those stories and backgrounds. I will say this much, and I, I do a lot of teacher certification videos, but I always, always stress this one thing. You know, being a teacher is half of it is doing your pre professional knowledge, professional certification, et cetera. The other half, all, the, all these things that you can learn, you know, in a classroom, et cetera. The other half of teaching is stuff that you're just going to have to learn OJT just by doing the job, okay, by being a teacher, dealing with kids, dealing with issues, dealing with parents, dealing with grading, dealing with administration, dealing with uh, fire drills and everything that comes with teaching and all that stuff. It just takes time and experience uh, to get better at. So don't, you know, give yourself time to develop that experience. I guess what I'm saying, all right, uh, I'm sure... Uh, if you haven't heard about people's first year teaching stories, everybody has. You just speak to those veteran teachers and be like, oh, what was your first year teaching? Most of them, okay, if they're being truthful, <laughs> are going to say, oh, my first year teaching was horrible. It was stressful. I didn't know what I was doing. Or it was like, okay, but now I look back, you know, 20 years uh, after that first year and well, it's like, oh, no, I made so many mistakes. That's only natural. You know, you can... Um, you know, prepare, prepare, and you need to do that. You got to prepare, um, uh, do all the book work and certification stuff, but give yourself time to develop that experience and don't, you're not, you don't have to be alone. Okay. Find those veteran teachers that can help you, help you find your own unique way. You don't have to be a copycat of another, uh, teacher, even though there may be, be a, there may be a role model to you and you're like, Oh, that teacher is like awesome. Like, Learn from them, take for what you like from them, and create your own personal style. Now, that's one thing about teaching that's kind of cool, too, that you can kind of create your own techniques to communicate to your own students. But learn from others, okay, until you find your own, um, you know, way. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best uh, on this particular exam and your uh, uh, teaching career. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.